Hello everyone. Uh, so we're going to look at, uh, for the next three weeks, we're actually going to look at a passage of scripture that, that you might be very familiar with, and it's about the armor of God. Uh, but we're not just going to look at the Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to be looking at Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. But we're also going to be looking at Isaiah chapter 59, verses 9 through 17. And what I'm going to do is a bit of a compare and contrast with the armor of God mentioned in Ephesians chapter 6 and a passage in Isaiah 59 where Isaiah talks about God actually wearing armor. And so it's going to be kind of an interesting little um, Bible study, I think, that we're going to be doing over the next few weeks. And so what I want us to look at is, first we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 6. I'm going to read the entire passage of, of Ephesians chapter 6 and Isaiah chapter 9. And then as we get on in the next few weeks, we're going to break them down uh, piece by piece. So Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17, says, Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you'll be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore... Take up the full armor of God so that you'll be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Isaiah 59, 9 through 17 says this, Therefore justice is far from us, and righteousness does not overtake us. We hope for light, but behold darkness for brightness, but we walk in gloom. We grope along the wall like blind men. We grope like those who have no eyes. We stumble at midday as in the twilight. Among those who are vigorous, we are like dead men. All of us growl like bears and moan sadly like doves. We hope for justice, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before you and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us and we know our iniquities. Transgressing and denying the Lord and turning away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving in and uttering from the heart, lying words, Justice is turned back, and righteousness stands far away. For truth has stumbled in the streets, and uprightness cannot enter. Yes, truth is lacking, and he who turns aside from evil makes himself a prey. Now the Lord saw, and it was displeasing, it was displeasing in his sight, that there was no justice. And he saw that there was no man, and was astonished that there was no one to intercede. Then his own heart, then his own heart, arm brought salvation to him, and his righteousness upheld him. He put on righteousness like a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head, and he put on garments of vengeance for clothing and wrapped himself with zeal as a mantle. So today I want to concentrate just on the verses leading up to the descriptions of the armor. So first we want to look at Ephesians 6, 10 through 11. It says, Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might, put on the full armor of God so that you'll be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. You have to put on all the armor. You can't leave anything blank. You can't leave anything unprepared. Satan will take advantage of any little opening that you leave for him. Now in physical warfare... A good enough soldier can can lead can leave a little bit off and still survive. A good enough soldier, most soldiers can't, and and even then with those soldiers, it's they come fully prepared. They may lose something in the heat of battle and still survive. Um, but you have to, and, and, and when you're dealing with Satan, you have to completely and totally cover yourself with the armor because he will take advantage of any opening he possibly can. 
Now in Isaiah 59, 9 through 11, it says, Therefore justice is far from us, and righteousness does not overtake us. We hope for light, but behold darkness for brightness, but we walk in gloom. We grope along the wall like blind men. We grope like those who have no eyes. We stumble at midday as if it were twilight. Among those who are vigorous, we are like dead men. All of us growl like bears and moan sadly like doves. We hope for justice, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. I want to go back to this, this one part. And I want you to understand, if you... If you don't fully commit to God, you will find yourself getting the opposite of what's expected. Notice it says, we hope for light, but behold darkness, for brightness, but walk in gloom. When you don't fully commit to God, you will get the opposite of what you expect. Things you expect that will make you happy will end up making you miserable because you're not in God's will. You're not fully committed to God. You're not doing what God's called you to do. And so when you try to do, and what's gonna happen is you're gonna to try to do everything that is as close to God's will as you possibly can that you think is gonna make you happy. And those things will end up making you miserable. In Ephesians, you go back to Ephesians. It's in 12 and 13, it says this, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of, the, of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God, so that you'll be able to resist in the evil day, and having done everything to stand firm. We're fighting a spiritual warfare, not a physical one. In a physical warfare, like I said earlier, in a physical warfare, a talented enough fighter can still survive and even succeed without all of his armor. In a spiritual warfare, missing one piece of armor is like missing all of your armor. So you have to maintain, and what are we talking about with armor? And we're gonna get more into it but over the next few weeks, but not having a consistent routine of reading your Bible and studying your Bible and, and and surrounding yourself with, with fellow Christians who can not only support and encourage you, but who can also give you some correction when need be. That's leaving your armor. Those are parts that, that create your armor for you. And so if you're not doing that consistently, if you're not having a, a consistent Bible study and prayer life, if you're not if you're not consistently putting yourself around fellow Christians who, who can support you, that's creating a, a an armor or creating gaps in your armor. Go back to Isaiah 59, verses 12 through 15. It says, For our transgressions are multiplied before you, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and we know our iniquities, transgressing and denying the Lord, and turning away from our God. Speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving in and uttering from the heart lying words. Justice is turned back and righteousness stands far away. For truth has stumbled in the street and uprightness cannot enter. Yes, truth is lacking. And he who turns aside from evil makes himself a prey. Now the Lord saw and it was displeasing in his sight that there was no justice. See, when we let sin enter our world, it begins to multiply. Notice that very first verse, so for our transgressions are multiplied before you. They will start to overtake us until it is testifying against us or, more importantly, blatantly hindering your testimony. See, when you, when you let sin stay around, that sin will multiply. And when that sin multiplies, it will actually create a testimony against you. And what I mean by that is people around you, the world around you will start to question your faith based on the sins that they're experiencing, that they're seeing out of you. And so when you, when they see these sins and they start, then they start thinking, well, are you really a Christian or, or, even worse is what they'll say is if that's what a Christian is, I don't want any part of that. And so you have to be really careful 
because of the more you let sin stick around, the more it's going to multiply. And the more it multiplies, the more those sins will testify against you. They will speak against your faith. All of this is why it is imperative that we stay fully covered with the armor of God. Like I said, we're going to get in the next two weeks, we're going to get into the specifics of those pieces of armor. But the question I want you to ask yourself, and I want you to, to keep a list, make a list, um, and, and, and kind of as this, as you notice these things, I want you to, to write them down. And, and what I'm asking you to do is actually send them to me. Um, but I want to know what chinks are in your armor, what sins in your life, what things in your life that you're struggling with that you would say, man, Chris, this is something that that I will say is a chink in my armor, a chink in my spiritual armor. It's something that's preventing me from being the Christian that I need to be. I want you to write those down and I want you to email them to me. Uh, you'll get my email in the, in the newsletter that I'm going to send out with this video. And I want you to email me so that I can, and I'm not going to condemn you. I'm not going to, uh, to bash you over your, your sins. I'm not going to bash you over your, um, over the things that you're struggling with in your life, but it's going to tell me how I can pray for you. And, and it's going to give me some specifics on how I can pray for you. So, so be thinking about what chinks are in my armor. And I want to pray over you on those chinks. And I want to pray for this right now. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for all that you do for us. I thank you for the fact that you provide us with armor. You provide us with all the tools we need for this great spiritual warfare that we're involved in. But God, we have to put the armor on. We have to put every piece of the armor on. And God, I pray that we will focus every day on making sure that we're fully equipped, that we're fully armored up, so that we don't leave this, we don't leave Satan with any type of opening that he can use against us. But God, when we find chinks in our armor, that we would seek you out, and we would seek to get those chinks corrected, so that we can be right back ready for battle. And God, I just pray that you would guide us and direct us in Jesus' name. Amen.